wastewater operating systems. Oh. You know, most people complain about immigrants coming and do it, taking out their jobs, but they take them all the dumbest, weakest jobs not to get caught. And no one want to work in the sewers. I personally do not want to work in the sewers, especially someone who don't know how to read their maps. That's just me. But anyway, wastewater operating, wastewater quality, wastewater treatment, and then wastewater management, great water administration is like it's a bunch of bullcrap wastewater, crap water, whatever. And the wastewater treatment section is how you treat water and wastewater operation, how that water is operated to get treated, and that's cool, whatever. There was a section called Lagoon. Uh, when I was doing York, I was forced to become the area Lagoon operator, but at that time, I um, I wasn't qualified to do it. I just knew how to do it due to my work. I mean, I did know how to do it because I was qualified, but I wasn't qualified for Lagoon, but working in suit, not Lagoon. Um, which is why I just left it while telling me one thing. Now they had to find someone else to do it. Middle finger. But when I got to Alaska, I owned a septic tank. And I, if I want to install my septic tank on my own accord, I had to get caught up with myself again. I refreshed on my work experience for the past. And I did wastewater, septic install, plumbing, all that stuff before. And bust some board crowd. And my contract said if anything that happened on my property, the easement would take care of it due to the easement, but apparently they did not honor that stuff. So I had to get taken care of it and I may have to get certified in it, which means bust some bullcrap, but you know, whatever. And tank and lagoons are a bit different, but how the process they all run is a big same. Except the tank, you have water come out, you have a waste to come in there and the tank size is based on your household by a certain code of the state. Now, y'all know how I hate inspection codes or house code because there's national code, how the entire United States supposed to be run. And then the international code, how other countries supposed to be run. Guess what I just said? International code, how the whole world is supposed to build their houses. And then there's state code, how the state wanted. But then there's a city code, it's like, whatever. So... You know, had to do all that bull crap and stuff. So, you have waste, you come out, you have a sewer injector pump line, a pump goes out, pumps that waste into the water, and the waste would build up over time. And all the heavy liquids and heavy solids that did not get dissolved would make it to the bottom and become sludge, and then in the middle would be bacteria, and the top would be its own set of bacteria. The top is its effluent, like the very skim of the top, like, how do you say this? Think of water, you just put whipped cream on it, whipped cream float on top, effluent. Um, and then after that, the next light is liquid, which is all the other stuff, and the middle is that stuff, and the bottom is sludge. Now, in order to keep your tank clean, it depends on how many people you're living with. If you're living with five people, if your tank is like a thousand gallons, you need to pump it twice a year. If your house is five people, and your tank is 15,000 gallons, you need to clean uh, once a year, or 2,000, 3,000, once every four years, whatever. Now, to operate a septic tank, you need to not put bleach in your tank because you want bacteria to eat the poop and whatever waste you throw it out of the toilet or sink or whatever. And not put any chemicals that will kill the bacteria in it. Not anything that will not be able to break down by bacteria. For me, I had to put bacteria in my tank by spoiling milk or throwing spoiled rotten food down if it can make bacteria in there. Uh, or buying septic treatment state quick and break down. Now, here's the downfall of that. As I stated before, it eat all the stuff and it will do three things turn into sludge, turn into liquid, or turn into methane. I make methane fuel for my own house for fuel and for my car for fuel. I ain't paying gas after that and stuff like that. So, once you build up sort of my top back and back flood. For me, I just get my vacuum, pump the sludge out, put in my bio digestion to make my fuel. That's just me. Congratulations. But that's how a tank operates. Once a tank gets to a certain size, it will slowly leave out of it before it reaches your back end. But the tanks will go a leach fuel, a bed fuel, a decomposer fuel, or whatever. This fuel purpose is to um, take the stuff that could not be digested and take and go through a process of decomposing in one area. Now, 
we're now fully on septic tank, but that's basically an anaerobic lagoon, or how some lagoons are. Anaerobic lagoon may purpose to digest animal waste or industrial waste like a school or large business or large companies or tire frequency and stuff. And usually for this goo, there's the excess where the water get freaking, how say the word, monitor if there's no leak in the drinking water, Milwaukee, Minnesota, or Milwaukee, Texas, North Dakota, yeah, North Dakota, I'm not stupid, but whatever. They supposed to do some type of money with just not getting leaking or drinking water or outside environment, that'd be environment that helps and stuff. And it would go to two lagoons, two or more lagoons for treatment. Um, basically, what I said, there's two layers in anaerobic lagoons. There's a type layer with all the grease and the scum and bacteria and the effluent. And the bottom layer is the anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic means without air. It means if you want this lagoon to work, you cannot have air in it. Most of the time, and you've got to give it bacteria that, can, that cannot survive in oxygen and air. It can survive well in anaerobic if you want to start treating it. Um, at the top it pop layer, the grease, the scum, and other layers, it will keep the oxygen out of it so the bottom layer can have anaerobic process, meaning no air process. Put it simply, put it simply for an anaerobic lagoon, you need to find a way to not have air in it. It does not have to be a closed container or not. Now, a lagoons can be interchangeable with ponds, pond or lagoon. Yeah, I think why I just said pond or lagoon, lake. Yeah, like I said, now jump in the lake, why? You'll see why. But the treatment process, there's polishing, there's stabilizing, there's moisturizing, there's maturation. Those are the treatment process, processes. Polishing is Getting the main dangerous stuff off, stabilizing, and make sure the main dangerous stuff don't get out. Moisturizing, getting ready to move on, maturation, and getting ready to move on again, and send it wherever you want to go to to where it's sitting fully decomposed. In a rubber lagoon, main problem, the most one out of all those lagoons, other than filtered lagoons, is the um, smell. Uh, like, think of being in a room. A tiny room with 80 people and every one person does for it and because it's a closed container the air is not going to you and hell in it and your body will digest that nothing for it and you will for it and the next person will for it and everyone is for it but it's a closed container you can't get out of it that's the purpose and then we're going to lack oxygen or you can decompose but you guys are not decomposing that congratulations now any rubber lagoons can be maintained by sodium nitrates. Guess what sodium nitrate is, people? If the stuff in your meat is pink and orange, that's sodium nitrate. It's what's how you dehydrate stuff or season stuff. Congratulations, you be eating poop smell odor. Then there's the regulation purification or residual purification technique where it will use the bacteria to blow in the lagoon and that will disturb the sludge and will cause the stuff to move around so the whole process can get digested. I never worked lagoon in New York. It was more of a aerobic lagoon to make my job easier or my environment's whole stuff easier. Like I said. But that's the end of lagoons. That's an aerobic lagoon anyway. I was going to go to all the details about that, but you know, I'm just going to say methane can be used for fuel, but you don't want the fuel to stick in your car, so you got to use other stuff, meaning you got to change the pistons in your car, change the engine around, or change your power line. That's it.